Welcome to Defense News Plus. According to the news of Financial Express kill laying ceremony of the second frigate of Project 11356 was held on 18th June 2021 by Vice Chief of Naval Staff Vice Admiral G. Ashok Kumar. The ships are being constructed indigenously at Goa Shipyard Limited under the intergovernmental agreement with Russia for manufacturing two advanced frigates for the Indian Army. Kill laying is a major milestone activity in making of any ship symbolizing formal commencement of the construction process. The first ship of which kill laying ceremony was laid on 29th January 2021 would be inducted in 2026 and the second ship will be delivered after six months. A large number of major components and significant indigenous built materials are being used from domestic market. The entire hulls of the ships are also being made with indigenous steel. Despite challenges posed by the ongoing COVID crisis, the shipyard continued to the production activities with active support of employees. He thanked the Indian Navy for their unstinted support and reiterated Goa Shipyard Limited's promise to fulfill the necessity of maritime defense forces through indigenous shipbuilding. Next update, as per the news from NDTV, the Indian Air Force is experiencing a monumental transformation with rapid adoption of technologies due to fast evolving security challenges coupled with rising geopolitical uncertainty in the neighboring countries and beyond. Addressing a combined graduation parade at the Air Force Academy, he said, Indian Air Force is undergoing a monumental transformation, rapid infusion of niche technologies and combat power in every facet of our operations has never been as intense as it is now. This is primarily because of the unprecedented and rapidly evolving security challenges that we face coupled with the rising geopolitical uncertainty in our neighborhood and beyond. Noting that the last few decades have clearly established the critical role of air power in achieving victory in any conflict. He said it is in this backdrop that IAF's ongoing power enhancement replicates immense importance. The IAF chief who reviewed the parade earlier also spoke about the crucial IF's role in the fight against the pandemic. Next update as per news from Economic Times, India and three European nations on Friday began a two-day naval war exercise in the Gulf of Aden with the aim of improving operational interoperability and sustained peace, security and stability in the key waterways. Five warships from the four nations are taking part in the EU, NAV4 or European Union naval Naval Force Somalia Joint Naval Exercise featuring advanced air defense and anti-submarine drills, cross-deck helicopter operations, tactical maneuvers and search and rescue missions are in this drill. European Union Naval Force Somalia is the EU's counter piracy mission of the coast of Somalia. The Indian Navy has sent INS Trikant for the drill. The other warships are Italian Navy ship. ITS Carabinere, Spanish ship ESPS Navara, and two French Navy ships FS Tonere and FS Sarkaf. Indian Navy spokesperson Commander Vivek Madhwal said the four navies will endeavor to increase and check their warfighting skills and ability to conduct as an integrated force to sustain peace, security and stability in the region. A virtual information sharing exercise is also being held between the Indian Navy Information Fusion Center and Indian Ocean Region and Maritime Security Center Horn of Africa. The EU, NAV4 and Indian Navy have been working together on multiple areas including counter piracy operations and security of ships deployed under the Charter of World Food Program. It also underscores the shared values at partner navies in ensuring freedom of seas and commitment to open, inclusive and a rules-based international order. Next update, according to the news of Indian Express amidst the controversy following a recent crash of MiG-21 and the third one in this year, the IAF chief Arkes Bhadoria said that there is a plan to phase out the aging fleet and substituting them with modern fighter jets. He also said that these vintage MiG-21s are not flying coffins. 
and every plane at the academy is fit to fly. Talking about the recent crash of MiG-21, the IAF chief said the planes are not accident prone just because of their age and there might be many reasons for the accident that MiG-21 will be phased out in a planned way very soon. The chief also was at the Air Force Academy, Dundigal, on Saturday to mark the successful completion of pre-commissioning training of flight cadets of Indian Air Force said it has been a year since the Galwan attack and since then we have made many strategic agreement. There has definitely been an increase in the deployment at key positions and meanwhile talks are happening on diplomatic fronts to resolve the conflict. Next update as per news from NDTV, Indian Air Force Chief Arkesh Vadoria on Saturday said the induction of 30 36 Rafale aircrafts into the Indian Air Force would occur by 2022. The Indian Air Force Chief, the Indian Air Force is absolutely on target with respect to the Rafale induction plan after receiving the 36 Rafale jets from France. He stated that the target is 2022. It is absolutely on target I mentioned earlier except for one or two aircraft minor delays because of the current crisis. But in fact, some deliveries have been ahead of time. So broadly, we are absolutely on target on the Rafale induction plan. On the operation allization plan, you are aware we are fully operational. So in terms of time, we will be absolutely on time. India had signed an intergovernmental agreement with France to procure 36 Rafale at a cost of 59,000 crore rupees. In 2016, Defense Minister Rajnath Singh had in February said the country would have the entire fleet of the fighter aircraft by April 2022. Next update, defense sources said the Indian Army will watch a trial of Russian-made Sprat SDM-1 light tanks in the near future. The cannon fire guided missile, dart ammunition, APF, SDS and heat among other things. Russia offered the tank last year during the visit of Rajnath Singh in Russia. We have told you before the Indian Army has agreed to buy about 350 light tanks from the international market to counter China's Type 15 light tank in Ladakh. The two Asian rivals have been filling the Himalayan region with troops and weapons as negotiations for disengagement in eastern Ladakh lost momentum. The army seems to be realistic towards Russia's Prat SDM-1 light tank. South Korea's Hanwha K-21-105 and Sabra by Elbit systems of Israel but more options are there in front of the army at this moment. The Russian's Prat lightweight tanks mounts the formidable 125mm smoothbore gun used by T-72 and T-90 tanks which means the Indian Army need not change ammunition. Russian manufacturers have integrated the high-powered engine facilitating good mobility in all conditions. The Sprat tank matches Indian Army's requirement of new generation combat vehicle platform superior performance equipped with niche technologies. Meanwhile, the South Korean Hanwha defense has also approached the Indian Army with indigenous production of K-21-105 on full transfer of technology. The DRDO is also developing a lightweight variant of K-9 Bajra with 155mm self-propelled howitzer mounted on a 35-ton tank. India and China maintain a deployment of thousands of troops, tanks and artillery guns in Ladakh along with its primary fighter jets, the new Rafale fleets in the eastern Ladakh region. China has also so carried out a series of border military drills. That's it for today. If you like our work, then please hit the like button, share this video and do subscribe this channel to get the notification of the next video. Thank you.